the Saab. Tunisia now into the attack. Good defense coming in from uh, the Saudi midfielder. And the ball goes out of. Amazing to watch, which was the Bangladesh game. But later on, Iran came in and beat Bangladesh Bondo 5 0. Iran are the reigning champions, and the kind of football that they played yesterday was amazing to watch. We hope the same from Tunisia today. Oh, yes, absolutely. Tunisians have been uh, very consistent, performing well. It's a semi final between the Tunisian Sonedes, and that was a good kick. Very, very good kick on the target, but equally well done by the goalkeeper to save that. So the first attack has come from the Saudi Arabians. Meanwhile, another close encounter, very close in the D. The goalkeeper does uh, the cleanup. Saudi Saab into the attack now, trying to make a move here. Number eight, passing it on into the midfield, to the right flank once again. So they are trying to make a move here, the Saudis. They're trying to slowly build it up. Tunisians have taken control now. They have the possession of the ball through the left wing. Does jersey number 11 going for a cross? Well done by the Saudi goalkeeper there. Coming in between the two Tunisians and uh, getting the possession of the ball once again. Jersey number 6 to jersey number 11. They're slowly building it up unlike uh, the other teams that we have just mentioned. Unlike Bangladesh Bandos. Unlike the Iran team. They're trying to make it a slow yet a steady build up. Tunisian goalkeeper into the action once again. Passing it on to the Tunisian defender. And a pass coming in through the centre of the field. Jersey number 6 now making a move. Going ahead and well defended. I think it was well defended. Although is it going to be a fa foul? I think it is. Yes, it is a foul. Uh, a tackle from the back. Uh, although it was uh, a clean tackle. But uh, the umpire thinks that it was a foul and rightly so. The match referees making sure that it is fair play. So the referee is uh, now walking back. And that's a kick, but off the target. So Tunisians have been trying to strike, but uh, the shots have not been on target, Fezan. At least they're trying to make a move here. And we've seen, you know, 30 seconds is more than enough to make a move and get the goal going. So, in a blink of a second, actually, that happens. And that is why it is very important to actually keep attacking, keep on the doing the same thing, keep on repeating the same moves. Saudi into the attack once again, through the flanks now, into the center. This is a faster move from Saudi and a kick coming in. It was on target as well, but the goalkeeper does well for Tunisia. Once again, Saudi into the attack. There's another kick coming in. The defender comes into the way and this goes out of play as Tunisia has the ball once again. So the Tunisian goalkeeper passing it on to the defender, to the goalkeeper once again. Jersey number four to the right flank. Jersey number 11. Jersey number six in the center, making a move towards the left flank once again. Tunisia taking their time, buying their time getting into the move of things. Yes, that's right. So, Nede Tunisians are uh, trying to compose themselves, com build uh, momentum into this game. Meanwhile, a good tackle num from number three, keeping the possession, tackling three defenders. And uh, this one just trickling away out of play. And the referee is on the sidelines, making sure that everything is fair. Start from the middle, throw pass. And uh, Saudi now have the possession. So the Arabian Saab, men in green, passing it on pretty nicely. This one played a through pass, but uh, no one to collect that pass on the other end. So the ball gone missing out of play. As of now, it's Tunisians who are, about bright, who are playing really well. Both these teams are looking very composed and calm. And they will look to score and there is a kick coming in from number eight a good defense from Tunisia the ball trickling away out of play again so there's gonna be a kick in once again we'll have to see who has the possession here I think it's uh, gonna be Saudi Arabia yes it is jersey number 11 on the left flank taking it forward in the center jersey number eight 
trying to get a move here, trying to get going here. Another cross which is looking really good. And a kick in coming in. Nice on the target, but into the Tunisian goalkeeper. There's going to be a corner play here. Yes, that's right. Uh, there is going to be a corner kick coming in. The keeper doing well, keeping the ball out of danger, pushing it away. And the Saudis now have the possession. Number seven, passing it on to number 10. This one passed away. And that's a hard tackle, I think. Uh, but he will have to get up and move on. Number three from Tunisia, taking the ball from the right flank, going towards... Oh, that's a beautiful interception from number seven from Saudi. This one going back to... Number 8, number 11, number 7. Saudi Arabians keeping the ball in their possession, looking to penetrate the Tunisian defence, the fortress. So, Nede, Tunisians and Saudi Saab, they're evenly matched. They're, they're man-marking each other. They're playing well. Giving good tackles. Saudi has had a few attacks. Tunisia has had faster build-ups. This is a balanced game of football going on right now in the first 10 minutes of the game. And a long pass coming in, coming in going long as well, going wide as well and out of play. Yes, uh, so Nede Tunisians now. Number 19 slowly jogging away with the ball from the right flank playing it towards the lob pass trying to get his partner but good interception again from uh, the Saudi Arabians this time a good pass but lost possession in the defense oh number seven is playing he's playing really well a very very busy player number seven for Saudi plays in the center and uh, FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup um, Dubai is also the event partner so thank you, Dubai. This is uh, actually the third championship that's happening, Kurtzi Fifco. And the first time ever in Dubai. The last happened in Monaco. Iran were the winners for that. Mexico were the first champions in 2018. And uh, that happened in Canada. So taking football all over the world, taking corporate football all over the world, promoting networking. And that is the main idea behind it. FIFCO has been brilliant in terms of that. And the, the way the tournament has been organized here in the UAE at La Liga Academy, all that has been great as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. I think uh, kudos and a big shout out to FIFCO. Meanwhile, a hard tackle. That is not done. Not good coming in from Tunisia. Absolutely not, uh, not very sportsman like. Tackle. It was just a pull-up coming in from the Tunisian player. And I think sometimes tempers rise when you're playing football like this. Because these are not professional players. But they take their football very, very passionately. Absolutely amazing. And passion is really, really important. When you're looking to penetrate into the field, trying to get a goal going, trying to score. It is very, very important. Passion. Yes, absolutely. You need passion to do anything. Everything that you do, you need to have passion. And that is exactly what we can see from these uh, two teams, the Sonede Tunisians and Saab Saudi Arabians. Passionable and fashionable football happening here at La Liga Academy, FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup. The other event partners are Alo. So thanks going out to all our sponsors, including Alo. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sonede. Tunisians and Saudi Arabian Saab, which have a, I think that that logo is a HSBC logo on their jerseys. So I'm sure they must have an association. And since this is a corporate cup, corporate champions cup, definitely you would have all the big brands associating with it. All right, another move coming in and another block coming in from uh, Saudi defenders once again. Uh, this is looking good from Saudi Arabia. The problem is most of the action is happening in the middle of the field. Nothing is going towards Tunisia or Saudi Arabia. They, these teams are really evenly matched. 
and that is why they are playing in the semis as well. The first semi that's happening is on field A. This is the field B action. And uh, it's all looking really, really good. Today is the final day of this uh, Champions Cup by FIFCO. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing to be a part of it as well, Shweb. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, this is an exciting format, exciting sport. Loved globally. So it is always a pleasure to be a part. And again, Watch Mojo, the Canadian team. Watch Mojo. They're also our event partners. So thank you, Watch Mojo, for the association. FIFCO World Corporate Champions Club Cup. That is what it is. And that is what all these teams are vying for. That elusive cup. These, this is the third season. While Saudi Arabian Saab taking the attack to the opposition. Good kick. But off the other side of the post. Good intent coming in from the Saudi Arabians. Absolutely amazing. So we are into the last minute of the first half of this game. And um, no goals coming in. But Jersey number 11 making a good move for Saudi Arabia here. And this time around, it's a long kick coming in from Tunisia. And the Saudi goalkeeper does well to fend it off. And... Uh Beaten the goalkeeper, unlucky that it hit the ports, post and goes astray. Now a corner kick coming in uh, for Tunisia. There you go to the centre of the field and a good interception once again from the Saudi defender, jersey number 8.
All right, so the second half is going to start right away. First touch is going to be taken by Saudi Arabia. There you go, the first touch in the second half. And uh, also there's uh, Saudi that are looking to re retain the position here in the second half. Somebody will have to come good. They will have to get a goal going. Because this is the semis. We need to have a clear winner here who can play into the finals as well. Another good move coming in for Saudi. But Tunisia, good defense shown by Tunisia all throughout the game. Both teams have been defending really well. Long pass goes long and it's going to be a throw in for the Saudi goalkeeper. You can watch us live on Sportsai. They are the broadcast production partner. YouTube.com slash Sportsai. Go there. You can watch the live feed of uh, the FIFCO World Champions Cup. Corporate Champions Cup. Where all the teams that are playing, 16 countries, mind you, are people, regular people who do a 9 to 5 job and then take football so passionately. Amazing for the game of football. The 5 on 5 format is also very demanding, just like the, the bigger format of the game. You're absolutely right, spot on, Fezan. This is a very exciting and a very tiring and a demanding format. Meanwhile, a good tackle coming in and this one just crossing over. We haven't seen uh, much goals uh, here. Not many goals have been scored, but uh, we've seen really some high quality football on display at the La Liga Academy. As uh, the Saudi Arabians Saab have control of the ball. This one just a soft pass. And this is a great pass, but no one to get that pass. A through pass coming in, so lack of communication and coordination among the Saudi Arabians. Yeah, just a little bit. That is what is missing for both the sides here today, at least. They were playing really good uh, football in the past two days, and that is why they're here in the semis. And there's a shot at the goal. Well done, the Saudi goalkeeper. It was nicely targeted by Tunisia. So Saudi, once again, trying to make a move going here through the center of the field. Three defenders at one time on one Saudi player and Tunisians are all over Saudis right now since the time the second half has started Saudi making an interception on a good through pass coming in for Tunisia and now it's gonna be a corner kick for Tunisia once again Tunisia looking to get a move going Tunisia into the attack and a shot on goal but good defense coming in for uh, the Saudi goalkeeper here it would it could easily have been 1-0 Tunisia. Yes, uh, absolutely a chance there, but uh, couldn't capitalize on that occasion, the Sone de Tunisians. Uh, meanwhile, another kick coming in, uh, this time targeting the goal, but uh, not a great uh, execution coming in from uh, Sone de Tunisians. Meanwhile, it's FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup and our streaming partners for FIFCO Dubai uh, is Sportsai. Yeah, so it's streamed all across the world. I've heard there are almost 8 million viewers worldwide who watch the FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup as Saudi trying to make a move going once again and too close for comfort there for Tunisia and a good shot at the goal by Saudi Arabia. But to no avail. Good work coming in once again from the Tunisian goalkeeper this time around. Saudi has the control of the ball now, looking to go big and a hard tackle. That was not a fair tackle. It's been given a foul as well. The Saudi attacker is not really happy about the, the kind of... Um, the kind. Tunisia playing the hard ball here. And it's been given a foul. The uh, Tunisian players are checking with the referee as to what kind of foul it was. So, yeah, Tunisians now looking to defend. Saudi might make inroads with this, Shoaib. Yes, this is a chance here for Saudi. Very close to the D. A free kick has been awarded, so they need to make full use of it. A set piece coming in play. And... Uh, they will look to exploit this situation as uh, they're just getting ready for the free kick. 
It's taking an unusual amount of time, actually, the free kick to get going. I think uh, the Tunisians, there's something that they don't understand uh, that the referee has decided. So here we go. Three Saudi fielders onto the ball here. In fact, three Saudi players onto the ball here. The cricket season is also on. And um, on is our cricketing vocabulary as well in this part of Dubai. There's, there's a lot of big events happening in Dubai. The T20 World Cup is happening for the very first time in Dubai. The World Corporate Champions Cup is happening for the very first time in Dubai. And Expo 2020, the biggest of them all, is also happening for the first time in Dubai. So the UAE is hosting a lot of these big first-time competitions here in the UAE, which is absolutely amazing for all the people here in UAE and for UAE as well to being that, that spot in the world where, uh, you know, sports can happen anytime and every time. Yes, that's right. Uh, UAE is the global hub now for events. This time uh, it is Saudi who is taking the attack on Tunisia. This is good defence because uh, a lot of the players are actually coming back into the defence. This is a good try. Oh, that was very close. Number seven was the man in question. Should have played that. Did play it. But uh, good defence coming in at the right time from Sunday Day Tunisians. Saudi in control of the ball once again. Going for the kick. Going wide of the goal post towards the left-hand side of the Tunisian goalkeeper. So nothing on the scorecard, on the scoreline. These teams are evenly matched. So Nede Tunisians 0, Saudi Saab 0. And uh, once again, somebody will have to do something about it. Sheltek, our event partners. So big shout out going out to them as well. Thanks to all our partners. And another foul coming in for uh, Tunisia, I think. Yeah, the Tunisian uh, defender is not really happy about it. But the referee has said there's going to be a foul. He not on the ball, but onto the player's legs. Yes, that's right. I think uh, the referees are uh, having a discussion about how they need to approach that incident. And uh, it has been... A free kick given. That was a yellow card offence, if you ask me. We have already seen one yellow card for Tunisian uh, midfielder. But this would have been a yellow card uh, offence as well. Lucky escape, I would say, for the goalkeeper of Tunisia. Meanwhile, back in action this time. Uh, good, uh, good defence from number four. And this is a hard tackle coming in. Saudi Arabians continue. Good pass. And equally well done by the goalkeeper. Well, good move. Just could not execute it well. Eventually, jersey number 10 for Saudi. Once again, uh, thanks going out to My Dubai as well. There are event partners also as one of the Saudi players is rolling on the field. And I think he's hurt as well. The referee has given another yellow card here. But the Saudi player is actually not looking very comfortable. Not looking comfortable at all. Some water coming in. Uh, the other Saudi players trying to help him out as well. The referee now taking a look at the player. We need to check the replay as to what happened there. But it was a yellow card given to the Tunisian uh, players once again for the second time in the game by the referee. Sonede Tunisians. And a stretcher coming out. This is, I think, the first time that we've seen uh, the stretcher come out on field B for the Saudi player who took a very hard fall on the ground. And I think he's a little dizzy as well. That is the reason why they are, they've brought the stretcher. And this, as I said, is the first time that we're seeing a stretcher out on the field of play, at least on field B, that we've been commenting upon since the start of this championship cup thankfully jersey number seven is feeling well the stretcher goes back he's gone out of the sidelines he's going to take a time out and there's a rolling sub that has come in in place of jersey number seven yes that is the uh, the benefit the advantage the speciality of this format the rolling subs and 
In goes Saudi Arabia. They are rolling it on now. A shot coming in on the target. And Saudi takes the lead right away. 1-0. That's a goal! What a great start this is for Saudi Arabia. Very close to the end of the game. And they have scored a goal here. Saudi Arabians 1. Sonede Tunisians 0. Number six now for Saudi Arabia has the ball. Pressure on Sonede Tunisians now. Just four minutes left. And uh, as you see, the ball is with the Saudis. They're trying to keep the possession as much as they can. As uh, the hard push coming in. Push from the Tunisians. Looking for that ball desperately. As uh, the Saudis now keep the ball with them, trying to just pass it on. Four minutes left for Saudi. Good kick again, very close to the goal post. That would have been 2-0. Saab, Saudi Arabians trying to attack. At every possible center of the net. 1 0, Saudi. Three minutes left in this play. Tunisians, the Sonede Tunisians, are looking in some trouble. And they've played some really good football there, Sonede uh, Sun Tunisians. And it's absolutely amazing to see Saudi Arabia actually come to the fore. And playing really good football. And what a time to get a goal. Just three minutes remaining into the game. Another pass taken on the chest by the Tunisian the midfielder. Jersey number three, Tunisia. They were looking for the attack here and missing out on it. And now the Tunisians once again for a block. Taking it forward. And there's a hard tackle this time around on a Tunisian player. And I think it's going to be... Given a foul, if it is, it's going to be very, very close to the Saudi goalpost. Yes, uh, I think it is going to be given a foul. The tackle coming from the from the behind, and uh, not. Uh, it's always very dangerous if you are tackling the opponent player when you're not in complete control. Especially while running. So what he's trying to say is that one should not tackle from behind, basically. That is what uh, Shoaib is trying to say. He's going round and round with this. Let's come back to the point. Yes, you should not. It's very dangerous, especially when it comes to injuries. And this time again, uh, hard tackle. Everything getting heated up in the summer heat. And Tunisians are trailing by one goal. They'll have to do something extraordinary here to win it for themselves. We saw, and again, I'm going to talk about the Bangladesh Bondo team who were lagging behind in a game. But they came back really strongly in the last two, three minutes of the game. And eventually won 4-1 after being lagging behind most of the game by one goal. So now, Tunisians looking for the attack as well. But Saudi goalkeeper going for a kick in, a hard tackle once again. You can follow us um, live 360 on live 360 and follow us at SF360 Digital as well. Another hard tackle coming in. Saudi players have taken some beating on the hands of Tunisia here. Yes, that's right. Now, it, uh, especially after the goal, a little bit of more aggression seen from uh, Sonede Tunisians. And that hand hit the face of the Saudi player. 0-1 is the score. Sonede Tunisians versus Saudi Arabian Saab. 20 seconds on the, climb, on the timer. And uh, this could very well be the last play. 
Saudi Arabian Saab keeping the possession of the ball and just oh nicely done there but I think the ball just crossing the line as now finally the Tunisians have the possession with them one last chance and a good tackle coming in from the goalkeeper looking for another goal Saudi last few seconds of the match here as the referee calls the whistle and Saudi has won the game and they are doing their mandatory sajda here to reach in the finals. This is a great performance by Saudi Saab. They won the semi-final 1-0 and now the Tunisian coach is coming onto the field and asking the referee for the timer running in because they thought that there was more time in the game remaining. As per our clock as well, there was none remaining. So yeah, nonetheless, all said and done. Saudi Saab have won the game. The second match is uh, going to be happening in just a little bit as well. And we're going to be back right here uh, for the next match coverage. So stay tuned.
All right, the next match on a field B, that is uh, the south field, is uh, PWC versus PMU. PWC, the UAE team. PMU is the Mali team. So it's UAE versus Mali. The first touch, here we go. UAE has uh, taken the first touch and they've taken the possession of the ball as well, going uh, cross court with the passes here. And uh, keeping the possession as well. UAE jersey number eight to jersey number six. Good passing here for UAE and an ambitious long pass gives away the position to actually the Mali team. And uh, good moves coming in for Mali. Good footwork as well. Good skill move from the Mali midfielder across pass. And no one is the taker there for that pass. My name is Fezan. Joining me in the com box to cover this game is Shoaib. Welcome back. Thank you, Fezan. Yes, uh, PWC UAE versus uh, PMU Mali. And uh, again, a tackle from behind. Not great. Always very risky. Very injurious to health. As you can see now, the Mali players passing the ball pretty nicely. And you, as you rightly said, Mali have a have some great uh, skill uh, uh, when it comes to dribbling the ball. And now number nine for UAE goes for a big hit, big shoot, but uh, missing the target. Missing the target, going to the left uh, of the goalkeeper, the UAE goalkeeper there. In fact, uh, UAE has the possession of the ball once again. An interception coming in uh, from the Mali midfielder there, but UAE doesn't give up possession. Good passing here for UAE and good interception, good defending once again. Coming in from Mali, the Mali goalkeeper passing it on to jersey number 10 on the left flank. So yeah, the match has started pretty quickly and another tackle, another push from the back. And that's going to be a foul. UAE is uh, taking the position back again. Yes, number six, ni a nice uh, through pass from number six to number seven. And this one again, a pass uh, in the vacant area. Good uh, tackle. And the possession back with the Mali players. Nicely done there in the center. Good interception again from six who have the possession for the UAE going towards the goal post. A good pass, good kick. And uh, almost there on the goal. Good save from the keeper and good save from the defender as well. Absolutely. Great to see that. A wonderful save. It was almost a goal for the UAE. And that took pretty quickly into the game. We are just into the third minute of the game. And the game is going pretty quick here. Another shot on goal. Handled well by the Mali goalkeeper. The goalkeeper himself trying to pass it on to the right flank. Jersey number 10 for Mali going for the shot here. And a push, a shoulder push coming in from the Mali attacker. Not really happy, the UAE defender there. Yes, yeah, some aggressive uh, football skills coming in from the Mali players. As uh, you see another track tackle, the possession lost by both the teams into the out-of-play action. We'll have to wait and watch how things pan out. In fact, yeah, there's a change, an update coming in uh, on the screen. You can see it's the UAE side for sure, but uh, there was some confusion because of the draws. It's UAE Shaloub versus PMU Mali. So Shaloub 
all over Mali in the first few minutes. Mali uh, attackers have done well. They haven't found inroads though because it's some good defending coming in from UAE. And once again, a shot coming in from the Mali midfielder. And this time it goes wide to the left-hand side of the diving goalkeeper for UAE. UAE back with the possession here. Yes, UAE now have the possession in the FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup. It's a semi-final between the UAE and Mali. And what a great game of football on display at the La Liga Academy in Dubai. They are the host. And what a wonderful host. What a wonderful venue. What a wonderful infrastructure we've got here for high quality football, high octane football coming in from the Mali onto the right flank. The ball in possession with the Malis. This time they're looking to attack. Good dribbling coming in from the Malis. Number eight is in form and what a great way to hold the ball in the possession. Still in possession and finally, finally he gives away and that ball has gone out of play. And that energy coming in from Shoaib actually goes out to our co-commentator Abdul Rahman who's making videos here. So thank you so much for all the love of the Rehman, big shout out going out to you brother as well. He has been covering the other games on the A field so you can listen to him on our live stream channels as well. Yes, uh, number 10, uh, number 8, uh, all in uh, working in tandem. Number 8, passing it to number 10. Number 10 now playing a lob pass into the vacant area but the ball will go all the way as uh, you have the two teams battling it out against each other. Shaloub UAE versus PMU Mali. A long pass straight into the hands of the goalkeeper who's wearing a cap in the summer heat of the UAE, protecting himself. We've seen other goalkeepers do that as well because it was pretty hot yesterday. The most of the matches happened in the, uh, the early morning on the and the afternoon. Another shot on goal uh, this time from... Uh, the Mali attackers, good work there uh, by jersey number one for Saudi Arabia, uh, for in fact UAE. Pardon me there, and uh, a good save coming in for UAE as the ball goes out of play. So in the first seven minutes, it's some uh, some really hard play coming in from both the teams, trying to make inroads, trying to look for those vacant areas to actually go for their shots. And again, Mali, another shot which was not on goal once again, going past the goal post. Mali is looking uh, to attack UAE right from the word go. Yes, uh, Mali is looking very, very aggressive, always in the other half. This time a good pass to the other player. Number nine is on there. Good save. Very good save from the UAE Shaloub goalkeeper. Number one has uh, been kept very busy by the Mali players. Another chance here for Mali. But this time putting the ball out of danger, still in possession with number 10, kick coming in, good defence from UAE Shaloub, number 6, the defender. Well, that's good work coming in uh, from the goalkeeper and the defenders for uh, UAE, Mali onto the attack and another big shot coming in and this one goes past the goal. I think it was very, very ambitious of him to shoot from the midfield there and uh, it goes out as expected. So yeah, the ball is going to be into play and UAE will have the position back again in the last 2-3 minutes. Mali have been all over the UAE. The Shaloub group team is playing here at the field B at La Liga Academy. UAE into the attack now. Good defence coming in from the Mali defender. And a foul called in by the referee there. So yeah, it's almost in the midfield where... Uh, there's going to be a foul taken for UAE. UAE was onto the charge, into the attack. You can watch all the proceedings live, 360, your live production and technology. They are our partners for FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup. Once again, thank you going out to all the sponsors who have made this absolutely fantastic event possible. UAE into the attack. And uh, I think it's going to be a... Handball? No, I think uh, the referee has asked him to actually take the free kick once again. So yeah, they're, they're, they're going to adjust the ball and they're going to take a free kick once again. UAE passing it on, passing it on and defense coming in from Mali. Not fair. So another free kick taken by the UAE Shaloub group. And this is even closer to the goal. This might just be the UAE Shaloub group's chance to actually show some attacking skills here 
against the Mali PMU side. So it's going to be a free kick. Two defenders defending it and then the goalkeeper as well for uh, Mali trying to take a peek in from the back. A shot coming in and wide of the goal, although a good shot coming in from UAE Shaloub. So still 0-0 zero, zero on the scoreboard. Another event partner is Mai Dubai, keeping us hydrated in this heat here at La Liga Academy. Some great footwork coming in from the referee as well, from the lineman as well. So yeah, football fever has taken over UAE with this uh, Corporate Champions Cup by FIFCO. And again, good footwork once again from uh, jersey number 10. And now it's jersey number 11 taking a shot. Defender comes into the way. Mali into the counter-attack right away. Mali defenders have provided that inroad. But uh, UAE has taken control of the ball once again. And now looking for a partner. Jersey number 11 just could not do much about it. Mali onto the attack and taking a shot. Good defense once again by jersey number 11 for UAE. And it's... A throw-in for uh, the UAE goalkeeper going out to jersey number 10 in the midfield. Jersey number 10 making a move here, going forward now. And a shot coming in, going wide once again. So we have seen quite a few shots coming in from both the sides. Unfortunately for both these sides, none has gone and hit the nets. Another event partner, Shell Tech. A lot of sponsors for this big event. Happening in the UAE for the very first time. The FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup. Shalub 0, PMU Mali 0. And again, Shalub making a move. But PMU, good defensive skills. Once again, PMU is on the attack. Counter-attack coming in from them. Good footwork, good passing and good movement. Good work done by the goalkeeper. But he cannot do much as this one has gone to the back of the net. Mali makes inroads. And that is a wonderful, a beautiful Goal by the PMU Mali. Mali has uh, got the lead number one goal and they were looking always very, very aggressive, uh, very lethal in the, the first half that we've seen so far. And this goal was well deserved, always targeting, always in the attacking mode. And they have been rewarded with a goal. Amazing work from... Uh the Mali attackers, it was on the second attempt that they go got the goal. The first attempt being blocked by the UAE goalkeeper who's been absolutely amazing till now in the game. He did all that he could and he was on the floor when the second shot was taken and just could not control, uh, just could not stop it from going to the back of the net. Once again, Mali has the position of the ball here. Yes, that's right. Uh, Mali and Shaloub. UAE both uh, looking good but right now it is the Mali who the Mali players the Mali team who are in front making sure that uh, they have the lead now it is important for them to maintain that lead and do not concede a goal maybe try and get another goal and put some more pressure on UAE So as of now, you see there's a, a free kick being awarded to the Shaloub UA players. Uh, a chance here for them to go and actually get that equalizer. It is important that the set pieces are in the right place. And um, they need to do what is good for them, which is to score a goal because they're almost closing in to the first half, as we see. A kick coming in, lower kick, but absolutely not on the mark, not on the money. Poor kick coming in, in the context of the game. This was a very important opportunity for them to try and score, but not to be. Absolutely, Shaloub uh, lagging behind now. Uh, the first half is coming uh, to an end. In the next minute or so, we'll have our first half ended. Mali on the move once again. Good defending from UA. UA looking for a move. Looking to make inroads from the center of the field and a great pass. Great work and great blocking as well from Mali. This could have been a goal for UAE. Not to be. Not today. Not right now at least. So yeah, a few seconds remaining. Another attack coming in from UAE. Another cross and this time there's no takers for that cross coming in for uh, 
the UAE jersey number nine trying to go for that cross uh, field pass to jersey number 10 who was never there never even close to the ball Mali taking the possession back again jersey number 18 trying to take control trying to take the possession and a hard tackle coming in for the Saudi defender there and again Saudi will have to do something special to actually come back off uh, out of this hole that they've put themselves into trying to build in roads they have done that well but the execution not just there jersey number 11 trying to go for uh, a loopy pass finds jersey number 18 for Mali in the way and uh, the first half with that is over and Chaloub group UAE team is lagging behind by one goal against the PMU Mali we're going to be taking a break and be right back stay tuned
Welcome back, uh, Mali versus uh, Shalub UAE, PMU Mali scoring the first goal. And now it is the start of the second half and a good possession, good tackle from the UAE, number six. And a foul being given to Mali. So UAE Shalub will look to attack. Number six will go for a direct kick onto the target, onto the far side of the post. And they want to see it in the, the replay, I think. We're back live, Mali versus uh, Shalub UAE. A ball pass, a lob pass, high pass, going out of play. Once again, Mali onto the attack here against uh, UAE Shalub Group. Mali is already leading in the game and another shot on goal, which the UAE goalkeeper lets it go because it was wide off the post it's towards his right hand side. And a corner kick coming in uh, for Mali and a shot on goal once again. This time UAE has uh, the control there. And good defending once again from Mali. So Mali all over the UAE Shalub group team. Going back to the Mali a goalkeeper, passing it on, going cross court pass, going long. So UAE will have the possession back here as uh, under 13 minutes remain in this game. UAE will have to come good, they will have to score a goal here to actually keep in contention. Mali again with the position of the ball as a block had come in. They're looking to attack. They're making inroads. Good work from the UAE uh, defender there. And now jersey number eight has the ball all to him. Good defense once again from Mali as the ball goes long and uh, to jersey number four. But I think there's going to be a foul here for UAE. Certainly a Mali defender is down. And he's clutching his leg. The Mali goalkeeper is saying that uh, someone stepped on him. So yeah, that's, that is actually bad. I hope he's doing fine because uh, the referees are taking a look at him. Hopefully he's doing fine. The physio for uh, the Mali side now coming out. It's very, very hot outside, mind you. And playing in these conditions takes a lot of willpower as well. So brilliant work from all the players who've given us uh, entertaining football all throughout these three days, the third and the final day. The stretcher is out again for the second time. We hadn't seen the stretcher in the first two days, but for the second time today, the stretcher is out. There's, there's another thing that I was noticing. Only one Mali player is actually wearing shin guards none of the other players have been wearing shin guards which can be really uh, dangerous mind you football is all about uh, your feet movement and sometimes your leg clash legs clash as well which might just be difficult and dangerous if you're not wearing those shin guards you can break a shin not great very painful thing to do jersey number six uae taking control and Mali with an interception and a shoulder push coming in. I think that's going to be a foul for UAE. Yes, it is. Mali is going to take this foul now. Almost 10 minutes remaining in this game now. Shalub group lagging behind. Mind you, these are the big games. The semis and the finals and the third spot games that are happening at La Liga Academy. 
in the UAE for the first ever FIFCO World Corporate Champions Cup in the UAE. This is the third edition of the Cup. UAE now showing some urgency here as a shot goes astray by Mali. So UAE goalkeeper asking his players to actually go forward. That is the only way to go for uh, Shalub Group, otherwise they're going to lose it. Mali, once again, good interception, good defending coming in from them. And a big shot on goal. And a hand by the goalkeeper. So that's going to be a corner once again for the Mali players to take. Jersey number nine, taking a look at the corner, taking a look at the field as well. Going to jersey number four, good interception, good defending once again by jersey number six of the UAE. Another corner coming in for Mali. This time goes to the center of the field, going for the big shot on his wrong foot there. The Mali player losing control of the ball. No power at all on that shot. Now UAE will have the control of the game. Control of the ball rather. Mali with a with an interception once again. Mali has been all over UAE in this game. Especially in the later part of the first half. Shot on goal. Defended well by the goalkeeper for UAE. Shaloub group. And another shot on goal. This time defended by jersey number four. And Mali players are asking for handball by UAE players. Good work by jersey number seven of the UAE. Not a good pass coming in from him though. Intercepted by the Mali Midfielder and another shot on the goal. Defended well by the goalkeeper who pushes it through very, very quickly. And a long pass, a very good pass to jersey number 8 of the UAE. Cross field pass coming in. Jersey number 8 losing possession of the ball once again. Jersey number 9 of Mali has been playing really well. Passing the ball around really well. Making a move and a good shot but goes wide. Oh, that was a brilliant shot coming in from Mali. Jersey number 8, I think. Or 9 it is, in fact. Under eight minutes remaining in the game. And UAE Shaloub group is losing this battle as of now. They need to come good. They need to come really, really good and really, really quickly. We've seen some games where teams have come back from behind and uh, won games. For example, yesterday, Bangla Bandos, 1-0 down in the last four minutes, scored the equalizer and then got three more goals in the last uh, three, four minutes of the game. So you can always do this once you play well. But that equalizer is very, very important because that is something that's going to give you confidence that, that you can actually hit goals and win it for your side. Shalu Group not able to do that right now as uh, the equalizer has gone missing. UAE taking a foul there, hitting uh, the Mali defender on the way. UAE still has the pos possession of the ball. Jersey number 11 going all alone, looking for a partner to pass the ball to. Passes on to the right flank, goes for a long pass, a high pass. As a Mali player steps on a UAE player's foot, I think, while that was pass was being uh, intercepted. Jersey number 6 holding his uh, foot, but getting up now and limping out. Mali on the attack once again. I think there has to be a rolling sub coming in for uh, the UAE. Yeah, it is jersey number 19 with fresh pair of legs who's come out actually to play in this game. Jersey number 9 for Mali has been very good today. Jersey number 19, great defending from him. Going out to jersey number 7. Big shot into the goal. That is the equalizer that we were looking for. Out of nowhere, UAE has come back and jersey number 19 with the pass. And a great finish from jersey number 6 ensures that UAE has scored the equaliser. And this game is live again in the last 5 minutes. Into the back of the net, towards the right hand side. Off the goalkeeper, off Mali. Mali. Has been in control of the game for the first, what, 25 minutes. And in the last five minutes, things are going to get changed very, very quickly. Great work. Shalu won. 
Mali PM, you won. Equalizer happening. Last five minutes remaining in the game. And I think there's a delay for some reasons which are unknown to us. The referees are talking to the players right now. The whistle goes in and another touch taken by the Mali players from the center of the field. Mali will have to do something extraordinary here actually to get their lead going once again, which they kept for like the first um, 20 minutes or so in the game. And equalizer was very, very important, coming just at the right time for UAE. And this is what we have been seeing as commentators in these three days of football that we have seen here is that the game can actually change in a matter of seconds. It was a great defense coming in from jersey number 19 who's fresh onto the field as a rolling sub. And after that, a good pass coming in from him, ensuring a good finish by jersey number four of the UAE as well. So things falling into place on that move for UAE. What a counter attack. What an absolutely amazing counter attack by UAE Shalub Group. Mali. Looking for that uh, space in the field once again to actually hit the back of the net. Three minutes, three minutes, 44 seconds remaining in the game. So under four minutes remaining in the game as we have seen another injury coming in for the Mali jersey number three. He is uh, still lying on the floor, holding, clutching his hand, head into his hands. I think feeling the heat and... that might have actually hurt him sometimes you you can even get a concussion like that I hope he's doing fine he's holding his head in his hands as of now three minutes remaining in the game I think there's um, gonna be some extra time for the kind of delays that we've seen in the game already but what a great comeback from behind once again for UAE hitting that equalizer Mali now looking to make inroads that was a good move for Mali just could not get going and UAE has the possession once again looking to attack looking to go in the lead here UAE and Mali has taken possession of the ball and they are talking to the referee that that was a foul there's an uh, argument going on between the two players of UAE and Mali jersey number seven of the UAE being involved in that altercation and ask asking the referee about the push that he received from one of the Mali defenders and he's not happy about it. So UAE has gotten a pass here, uh, has have gotten a foul here and a free kick to take. Jersey number 11 is going to be taking that free kick. I don't think he's going to go for the heroics here and go for the big shot into the back of the net, which is going to be very, very difficult because these are small uh, goalposts, mind you, not as huge as uh, the goalposts of the full game, professional football. But what an absorbing game we have had on our hands. So Yui is still taking time and keeping the position of the ball. Jersey number seven onto the right flank. Going for the big shot. Just wide. Just wide. It was a good shot coming in from jersey number seven of the UAE. But just wide to the right hand side of the Mali Goalkeeper Mali onto the attack now. Jersey number 11 going for that shot and uh, well defended by Jersey number 11 off the UAE. And there it goes into outside, in fact, of the field of play and for a corner. So Mali is going to be taking a corner. We are into the last uh, one and a half minute of the game. Let's see. Mali trying to make a move here, going for a big pass and a header. Nicely done, but nicely held by the UAE keeper as well. Brilliant football overall. Jersey number 7 into the attack. Good interception by Jersey number 10 of the Mali. 11 has the ball now. Passing it uh, to Jersey number 4 of uh, Mali. Taking a shot there and missing it out. Jersey number 10 of Mali now. Passing it on to Jersey number 4 once again. And uh, they have gone in for a shot. And I think it's... Uh, it's not been given a goal, although it went inside the goal because of a foul that happened some time back. So yeah, the referees are talking uh, to the players about this foul. And there's a rolling sub that is coming out now for Mali. Platform streaming partner for uh, FIFCO, Kura. You can watch us live there. And you can enjoy the games there and enjoy your commentary as well. 1-1. One, one. 
as the timer is running out now only a few seconds remaining in this game uae has the possession of the ball and mali on to the attack once again good defense coming in from uae uae shalub group mali into the attack and uh, a foul coming in mali not really happy about it mali not really happy about the foul so uae is in a hurry to make something happen in this particular game again a big shot coming in from uh, the mali player long kick and just could not get uh, through to the goalkeeper of UAE who passes it on to jersey number 7 but a good interception coming in once again from jersey number 10 of the UAE who is showing some skill moves some uh, professional footballers show these moves standing up on the top of the ball and again good move coming in from uh, the mali players individually they are really strong they haven't clicked to get today as a team though another foul coming in and uae will uh, take the free kick once again so last few seconds remaining in this game the score line says 1-1 mali goalkeeper going for a big shot directly to the uae goalkeeper and that is it that is the game it's all over it's 1-1 is it because there was something that happened uh, actually just towards the final few seconds and i think mali had scored a goal which was given by the referee as well although our score line says 1-1 but we'll have to talk to the referees and we'll get back to you on this for now we're going to be taking a break here and we'll be right back with the next match that's going to happen here at la liga academy in the world corporate champions cup by fifco stay tuned
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this World Corporate Champions Cup match between Synergy Recruitment of Ireland and Sonaid from Tunisia. It's the third place, fourth place playoff. Of course, even though they, these two sides couldn't make it to the final, there's plenty of bragging rights still at stake to high-quality sides, the Irish in their national flag colors, orange, white, and green, and Tunisia in red and white. There you can see Gavin O'Keefe, the star striker for the Irish. Oin Duffy in goal, Sankey Homaldini, Paul, Stephen, Gavin O'Keefe, of course. Niall, their number 10, and Siren will be wearing the number 7. So they do a lot of rolling substitutions. They all you do is the entire squad very effectively. And there you can see the squad for the Sonate team of Tunisia as we have kicked off here at Field B. So perhaps not having a route to the final, but still would like to get a win to end a successful tournament for both sides. I've impressed everybody who's watched them play and just couldn't make it by the barest of margins. Tunisia this time winning the ball, but a bit of a tough tackle there. Step over there and nicely shot straight to the Tunisian keeper though. And there will be a stoppage in play here. Had an early foul. Seems to be a Tunisian player. Both players are down. Gavin O'Keefe, as you can see, there for the Irish, holding his left calf. Bit of an impact injury there. Hopefully, both parties will be all right. Of course, it is the AstroTurf surface. It's not easy to land on it. can be a very rough fall. And the commitment level at the speed at which these guys play, it's absolutely incredible. Good to see the medical staff out there very quickly. Of course, injuries are part and parcel of the game. He's taken a hit on his right kneecap there, so that magic spray is coming out. Hopefully, he should be fine. Good to see Gavin O'Keefe, the number eight for Ireland, on his feet. He looks good to go. And uh, Tunisian number 11 as well. Hobbling a bit, but I think he'll walk it off, as they say. Beautiful world-class facilities here for futsal at the La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City. And plenty of pride to play for. Plenty of national pride at stake here as the Tunisians get on the ball once again, trying to reset from the back. Nicely worked to the right flank. Snapping away at his heels is Sankey. Wins the ball, does well there. Gavin O'Keefe battling there with the Tunisians, but they've got some space to counter here and just stepped on the ball. Unlucky there. And Gav wins the ball back. Outside of the foot, working it to Niall. And this time they will look to break down the right flank. Good tackle there, aggressive approach there from the Tunisians. Now bursting forward, nice. Ball played to the left flank, but just dribbles away, and Owen Duffy will step into it. So both teams getting some looks here, looking attacking, looking adventurous. Good to see them not playing a defensive style of play. That's not really their team ethos. That's not really their style. They look to pass the ball around quickly, play possession football. 
They want to score goals. They want to be aggressive. They want to get on the front foot. They want to entertain the fans. And that's the way 5-on-5 five five futsal should be played. Oh, once again, another aggressive tackle. Gavin has gone down in a heap. A bit of rough tackling here going on. And this is going to be a free kick for the Irish. The referee having a stern word with the Tunisians, but no booking given just yet. And Gav has been among the wars already. Back on his feet and setting up for the set piece, plays it to his partner. Surveys the field and squares it to Niall. And they'll look to reset right from the back. They have Sankey playing in an advanced role. And Owen Duffy has stepped out well wide. Very important to retain possession. This time Gavin making a move down the left flank. Hits the side netting there. And that could have been very close. In fact, has it gone in? Yes, it has. 1-0 for Synergy Recruitment. Gavin O'Keefe has buried that with his left foot. What a finish. It looked very close from here. I thought it had struck the side netting, but no. He beat the keeper at the near post. And this time, Niall rounds the keeper and just in the nick of time. It's been taken away from him. That would have certainly been 2-0. Corner kick here for the Irish then. Blasted in to the box, straight to Owen Duffy. Interesting tactics here. Gav posting up here on the left flank. Trying to find some room. He's so good in possession. Really is a brilliant futsal player. Home Aldini coming into the game as well. Big physical presence in the center of the park. And the Tunisians are chasing shadows right now. The Irish stroking the ball around very comfortably. Owen Duffy. Playing the through ball down the left flank. Homaldini out there as well. Looking to set up the attack and intercepted by the Tunisians. They're breaking on the counter down the right. Has a shot at goal, but it's been flashed high and wide. So taking some risks there in possession are the Irish. But it's still 1-0. There's still one goal good to the good. This time Homaldini down the left trying to play a 1-2 with Gavin O'Keefe. This time the Tunisians will break down the middle. Tries to flick it across. Oh, and Duffy makes the save. Very close to getting the equalizer there, the Tunisians. Breaking here once again. There's an overload down the left. Oh, and Duffy clears it just in time. Poor pass there. Should have found his striker. And now the Tunisians have picked up ahead of steam. Now they're really... Bursting forward, a corner to their name. Four minutes gone. The Irish have taken the lead with Gavin O'Keefe, a beautiful finish with his left foot. But this is a set piece opportunity for Tunisia. Low cross into the box, mishandled, but Owen Duffy will clean up and they'll rebuild down the right flank. Home Aldini on the ball, steps into the center of the pitch, left footed shot. And it's a goal. Brilliant finish there from Home Aldini. Skipping across the defender. 2-0 for Synergy Recruitment. The Tunisians getting hit on the break. Off the corner. And now the Irish are in complete control of this fixture. And immediately after scoring, Home Aldini steps away. The rolling subs are coming on. And Tunisia making errors just when they look to equalize. Trying to build down the left flank. Once again, possession is lost here, and the Irish will reset. Owen Duffy on the ball, working it to Niall down the right side. And now they can just play some possession football. Hang on to it, play for time. They've taken control of the game. It's going to be Tunisia chasing them. And they're just denying them possession, working the ball around with that double pivot in their own back line. Bursting forward is Sankey, losing the ball here. The Tunisians will look to counter here. Bit of an overload here. Niall being isolated. And they've given it away. It's Sierra and stepping in very nicely. Good work. 1-2 executed there. 
And you can see how confident they are in possession. Just working the ball around. And here's an overload once again. Flashed across the Tunisian goal. Good attack there. Good quick passing. Good quick feet. And that could have been very close. Tunisia two goals behind. We're halfway in to the first. Uh, this is, of course, the third, fourth place match here going on between Tunisia and Ireland. Oh, trying to turn his defender, but that's been taken away by Senki. He's a bit upset that there's a foul being given. And this is a free kick opportunity for Tunisia. It's quite central here. Big lads there in the Irish wall. Nile mining that far post. Oin Duffy getting the men in his wall arranged. Let's see if Tunisia can capitalize. Go for that low shot into the corner perhaps. Yes, he does a beautiful hit, but it's flashed past the right upright and it remains 2-0. Oin Duffy had the angle covered. It was hit with some serious pace. But a chance wasted there by the Tunisians, by the North Africans. Sierra on the ball, chips it into the center. There it is, Gavin O'Keefe breaking at speed. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper, squared. And 3-0 for the Irish. Lovely move, a slip there by the defender. And they had to pay the ultimate price. Sierra getting the goal thanks to the assist from Gavin O'Keefe. It's become a one-sided route here, almost 10 minutes into the first half. And the Irish had three goals to the good. Once again, the Tunisians under pressure here. Whenever they've made a mistake, the Irish have pounced. Low speculative shot, easily going past the right upright of Owen Duffy. So it looks like the Irish will take the bronze medal here. Played a commanding game. This time Owen Duffy taking some chances. Squared across. Beautiful save. Straight at him. Hit at some serious power. But he's made the save. It was his error that allowed that opportunity. But he's made up for it with some style. Low cross into the center. Trying to step into it. Home Aldini skips away. And this time the counter is on for the Irish. Down the left flank. Home Aldini bursting and pokes it. Just past the right upright. Trying that toe poke finish. But didn't find the angle. Five minutes remaining in the first half. The Tunisians looking to reset once again. Three goals to the good are the Irish. Floated into the Irish box, but safely cleared out. Home Aldini once again. Left foot shot, and it's gone past the upright. Looked very close there. He has looked brilliant in attack today. Usually very resolute in defense. He's the one cleaning up all the mess made behind, but this time they've allowed him to go forward and stretch his legs. And he's paid off big time. One goal for Gavin, one goal for Home Aldini, and Sierran getting the third. Five minutes to go in the first half. The Tunisians well against it. They'll still be gunning here for that bronze medal here at the World Corporate Champions Cup at Dubai Sports City. Gavin O'Keefe winning the ball there on the right flank. Brilliant turn, but he's lost out. Square to the center. The Tunisians have hit the left upright. Can you believe it? They finally get an opportunity one on one with the goalkeeper. And he's clanged it off the left upright. Unlucky there. Deserved a goal. And it remains 3 0 for the Irish. Fortune has favored them in this game so far. It's going to be a kick in for the Irish. Playing it to Nile. Into the center of the pitch. Gav is there, posted up. Nice turn and nice giveaway. A first time shot, absolutely hammered there, but well over the top of the crossbar. The Tunisians looking to rebuild once again from the back. They've played a very fluent pivot there, as opposed to the double pivot that the Irish have played with consistently. Nile and Oin Duffy this time, the Tunisian keeper bursting forward to the center circle, squared. And that's a brilliant goal for Tunisia. Is it the goalkeeper? 
gets one goal back. Yes, it is. The keeper, brilliant finish. 1-2 with the right flank and nicely buried there. Had a bit of a smile on his face as well. So they get one back just before the half. Three and a half minutes to go. Now the Irish will need to be careful. They don't want to concede once again before the break. Sieran working it to Sankey, who's at the right flank, trying to dribble into the center, but taking the option of his goalkeeper out there, Owen Duffy. Nice crossfield ball. First time volley in to Sankey. Shot and nicely saved and nicely cleaned up. And uh, Sieran having a poke at it, and he's hit the Tunisian keeper in the ribs. Have to be careful there, but no harm intent. And nicely saved and nicely cleaned up. And uh, Sieran have to his name the Tunisian goalkeeper and doing very well there indeed. Now that double pivot for Tunisia in play, breaking forward immediately. Finding some space in the Irish box, trying to turn, squares the ball. Lofted shot over the keeper. Oin Duffy is a big lad, it's hard to get the ball over and under him. Just about two minutes to go. 15 minute halves of two in 5-on-5 five five futsal this time. Sankey breaking down the left. A low cross but Siren couldn't get there. There was an opportunity to get a headed goal. But Tunisia not wasting any time, getting on with the game. Nicely worked there but just a bit of miscontrol allowing the kick in for the Irish. Relieve some pressure. This is of course the World Corporate Champions Cup here at the La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City. It's been an incredible tournament. Brilliant action. Owen Duffy doing really well there. Lost the ball but had to make up with it and made an excellent tackle. A goal saving tackle there. Work to the center this time by the Tunisians. Passing it around nicely in and around the Irish box. Back heel this time, creating some space down the left flank. But they have called it for the Irish. And in fact, it's half time here in the third, fourth place game between Synergy Recruitment of Ireland and Sonade of Tunisia. 3 1 to the good are the Irish. We'll take a short break and be back after the break for the second half. See you then.
Right then, welcome back everyone for the second half of this game between Synergy Recruitment of Ireland and Sonade of Tunisia. Ireland are 3-1 to the good. And now the Tunisians need to hit back and need to hit back fast. They got a goal just before the half. Hit the upright as well. And now need to get back in the game. Irish looking in control. Gavin O'Keefe once again the star for them. Number eight on the back. Tunisia with a kick in opportunity. Let's see if they can capitalize. Low cross driven into the center. Brilliant interception there by the Irish, but Tunisia get it back quickly enough. And of course it was the Tunisian goalkeeper who hit that goal for them. A lovely one too and smacking it into the back of the net. Caught the Irish by surprise. Losing possession here and it's been tucked away. A critical error. And he's had to pay the ultimate price. Gavin O'Keefe just rolls it into the goal. It's 4-1 to the good for Ireland. Just a minute into the second half. Taking one adventure too many, the Tunisian goalkeeper. And that will really take the wind out of their sails. Oh, and they've equalized immediately. Tunisia hit back, brilliant. Low hit across the keeper, nutmegging Owen Duffy. And we've had two goals in the minute of thir in, a, in the span of 30 seconds. What a start to the second half. We're barely 90 seconds into it. A goal apiece. 4-2 then. Lofted ball down the right side. Work towards Gavin in the center, trying a give and go, but he'll turn and spend some time on the ball. Lovely footwork. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Sparkling feet of Gavin O'Keefe. And he makes it look so easy, so effortless. He really is a top player at this level. Gavin O'Keefe. Mikhail for Nigeria. And smacking it into the back of the net. Caught the Irish by surprise. Losing possession here and it's been tucked away. There. And it would deserve to be put away. Bit of a tug on the shirt there on Gavin. He's played it early, down the right side, chips it into the box, and how has he missed? One and one with the keeper, and he's blazed it high and wide. Unbelievable miss. That should have been 5-2 for the Irish. Home Aldini immediately getting into the act, stepping in, and perhaps overpowering illegally his Tunisian marker. So it's 12 minutes to go. The Irish are two goals to the good. Chipped into the box, headed away by Niall. And the Irish will get possession. Looked a bit of a speculative effort. There was nobody really in the box for Tunisia. Owen oh, Duffy and Homaldini combining here, trying to build from the back. Niall with the give and go, lovely, excellent flowing move down the right side, squares the ball, shot first time, but it's been cut out. Kevin O'Keefe getting on the ball here and cleared immediately by the Tunisians. But you can see they're facing a lot of pressure in their own half. Not easy at all to find openings against this tall, rugged Irish back line. Good through ball attempted, but nicely read by Homaldini, and now the attack breaks down. 1-2 with Gavin O'Keefe, and he's tucked it away. A beautiful goal. 5-2 for the Irish. Yet another flowing move. Home Aldini and Gavin O'Keefe combining. And a lovely lofted chip over the keeper. And this game has become a rout for the Irish. The attack breaks down. 1-2 with Gavin O'Keefe, and he's tucked it away. A brilliant goal there. Absolutely brilliant. Flowing football. And the Tunisians have been rocked early in the second half. Senki on the ball then, playing that left wing role. Niall always the pivot, the sweeper out there. Always plays within himself, sacrifices for the side. Beautiful cross field ball. And that could have been another opportunity for the Irish to get their sixth. Lovely raking ball. Right across the pitch. Brilliant vision from Gavin O'Keefe once again. 
It's going to be a corner for the Irish. Although they have a three gold cushion, they want to get some more. Elevate that goal difference. Even though it will be cosmetic, but that's been cleared back to Niall. Owen Duffy stepping up as the keeper. Perhaps he'll try to get a goal as well, just like the Tunisian keeper. Stepping in there, Gavin O'Keefe around the Tunisian box, but chooses to take the route. Chipped in, headed! And that could have been very close. Sankey with the leaping header. Just couldn't direct it towards goal. Just under 10 minutes to play in the second half. Nicely intercepted, nicely read. And once again, it's Niall building up from the back. Sieran is there for the short pass, but he'll choose to go the other route. Keep stretching the pitch, moving the Tunisian defenders. And it was a pretty big surprise that Ireland did not make it to the final, but it's very fine margins in 5-on-5 five five futsal. It just wasn't their day. It was a very close game with Rafsanjan of Iran, but in the end, the Iranians have triumphed, and they will face... The Saudis in the final, SABB, a champion outfit in their own right. Eight minutes and then some remaining. Siren playing the ball back to Owen Duffy, playing to the center half. And there could be an overload on here. Siren bursting forward. He's been another one that's caught the eye, poked in. And that's the sixth goal for the Irish, a brilliant finish. A superb individual effort there by Siren, the number seven. Once again, using the outside of the foot. The keeper was caught un unawares, and it's 6-2 for the Irish. It's become a rout. Siren bursting forward. He's been another one that's caught the eye, poked in. And that's the sixth goal for the Irish. Individual class and quality here. Just on a superior technical level. Synergy recruitment of Ireland. Fantastic. Tunisian keeper, one of the goal scorers on the day. Oh, a low shot outside of the boot, and that's a rough tackle there. It has been saved there, but I think it may have been a foul on the Irish, having a word with the ref. But he's let it play on, and it's going to be a corner for the Tunisians. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Cleared away by the Irish. All the men in and around their box, so the Tunisians will have some space. Give and go there, nicely done. Trying to chip it towards the right flank, but over the attacker. So that move will break down eventually. The superior fitness and technical levels of the Irish have clearly been on show. 6-2. It was 3-1 at the half, and both sides have doubled their tallies. Looking to create a move here, trying to pivot off the Irish box, down the right flank. Chipped, give and go there, but some snappy defending there from the Irish, and the attack has to be reset with the Tunisian keeper. Sierran with a brilliant sixth goal there for the Irish. Fantastic finish. Good speed shown there by the Tunisian winger. Has to turn back, though, as the Irish regroup. Trying to get the ball out, trying to create an opening, but the Irish are a very well-drilled and very well-versed unit. Immediately, whenever the Tunisians get on the ball, they have a man following. And this has been won in midfield by Sankey, but no, the referee allows the play to go on. Oh, that was a rough tackle there from Siren. And the Tunisians aren't having won in midfield by Sankey, but no, the referee allows the play to go on. Oh, that was a rough to Tunisian number six. We've seen tempers flare up occasionally, and it's been a booking for Siren. And I believe rightly so. That was a very negative tackle there. Not required in 5-on-5 five five futsal. It's a game of skills and speed, not of aggression. And you already have a four-goal cushion, so there's no need to be so erratic out there in the middle. Free kick then for Tunisia. Five minutes to go in the game. Smacked just 
the left of the right upright Owen Duffy had it covered but that ball was traveling could have been very close if it had been on target so we can see the big number 11 home Aldini out there making some subs are the Irish Sankey out there crossing the wall to Gav in space on his left foot plays it chipped into the box but miscues it and a quick through ball out to the right flank but once again blocked away good defending there by the Irish oh this is an opening and there it is the third goal an overload on the left flank worked across and smacked into the back of the net so a consolation goal here for the Tunisians it's 6-3 on the day still have four minutes remaining in the game so we've seen funnier things happen in futsal and now it's Gavin O'Keefe on the ball. Lovely footwork. Tricking and teasing the defender. Works it to the left flank eventually where Niall is out there. Oh, and Duffy taking some risks there. But once again, there's an overload down the left flank. Niall striding forward, chipped in. And it's been cleared off the line. Give and go. That header didn't have a lot of power on it from Niall. And the Tunisians managed to clear. Lovely flowing move once again. And the key was Owen Duffy there adding that extra man in midfield. Could have been the seventh, but just cut away in the nick of time. Good awareness there from the Tunisians. Three minutes to go, home Aldini with a big boot across, but the Tunisian keeper will step onto the ball. Some space down the left flank, trying to isolate Nile there. Give and go, oh, chips it, but home Aldini read that play like a book, breaking down the left flank this time. Oh, a cross field shot, but just past the upright once again, very close. Could have played like a book, breaking down the left flank this time. Oh, it, but home Aldini speed moves across the ground very quickly. Tunisians trying to create one final flurry here, perhaps get a goal or two, make the Irish sweat. The early afternoon is setting in here at the La Liga Academy. Nice move there, brilliant dribbling, and that's the fourth for Tunisia. A brilliant individual effort, leaving the defender for dead and pokes it in off the left foot. 6-4, goals galore here for Ireland and Tunisia. A fantastic game we've had in the third, fourth place playoff. And perhaps some concern for the Irish. Still two minutes to go. Still need to see this out. It isn't over by any means. And they can't afford to make any mistakes. The Tunisians have been resolute. They have been dogged. They have continued plugging away. And now, it's, they're only two goals away. Nicely played to the striker once again. Nutmeg there on Nile. Once again, opening up there for the Tunisians, but Owen Duffy steps in and clears the ball. Finds Gavin in space, tries to beat the defender, but can only go sideways. Trying to hang on to the ball, and that's very clever, very smart. 90 seconds to go in the game. No need to push forward and create some openings at the back. Just play possession football and see the clock out. Oh, a bit of a late tackle there once again. Home Aldini on the ball there, squares the ball. Oh, loses possession at the crucial time. Just a minute to go here. Oh, and Duffy on the ball. He's just working it around, denying the Tunisians even a sniff of a chance. Lofted into the box. Heads it, but into the side netting. Just about 50 seconds to go. The Tunisians bursting forward. Quick ball played. Brilliant interception, home Aldini, the number 11. And look at that footwork. Absolutely electric. Shot at the Tunisian keeper, and he does well. A double save there, just to make sure with Gaz bearing down on goal. 30 seconds remaining. Tunisia desperately pouring forward to find the fifth and dreaming of a sixth. That has been skewed off Nile. He'll dribble away for a corner. Asking for the ball to get on with the game quickly. We might get some added injury time here. 
We did have a couple of players go down and needed medical assistance. So we might have perhaps 30 to 40 seconds more for the Tunisians, for the Tunisians, pardon me, to strive for a goal. Blocked away by Homaldini. Nile on the ball, looking to clear, and he does immediately a route one. Brilliant interception there by the Tunisian defender. The keeper bursting forward. Oh, lost possession there. Homaldini one on one with the goal. And they've tucked it away for the seventh. It's Gavin O'Keefe who's buried it. Signed, sealed, and delivered the third place finish for the Irish. It's been a brilliant game of football. A brilliant, enterprising game. Chock full of goals. 11 goals to be precise. And in the end, it's the luck of the Irish. Shot at the Tunisian keeper. Sonade from Tunisia for... What a brilliant third, fourth place playoff we've had. We're going to take a short break and then over to the big final. Till then, we'll see you soon.
Welcome everyone to the World Corporate Champions Cup Final. It's going to be Rafsanjan of Iran in all green alongside SABB in all white of Saudi Arabia. You can see the flags flying high here at the La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City. It's been a long tournament full of ups and downs, trials and tribu tribulations. But in the end, these two are the cream of the crop as the two teams are lining up for the national anthems. Brilliant scenes here. The Iranian contingent, contingent you can see in the middle of your screen. They have been gunning for the title right from the outset, defending champs. And now this is their time to shine. These lads are carrying the hopes and dreams of millions. And good to see the spirit there. Fist bumps all around. The three officials there as well. And joining me in the com box for this big final is Faizan Khan. Welcome, Faizan. Thank you so much, Ahmed Khwaja. This is brilliant. Iran, the defending champions, are going to play against Saudi Saab, which has been fantastic throughout the tournament. What a great tournament we've had in the past three days. This is the third and the final day. And we are here for the main final that is happening. There's another final that is also happening on the other ground where uh, two more teams are vying for the play trophy. So, which is, which is really amazing, two different kind of, um, of uh, teams coming in and performing and I think they are both going to take the cake here. Yes, indeed, there's going to be the African Derby in the Plate Cup Final between PMU of Mali and the Galacticos of Nigeria. But meanwhile, we will be calling this the Grand Cup Final, the two predominant sides in the tournament, SABB from Saudi and Rafsanjan from Iran. They play a brilliant fast-paced attacking brand of football so we're expecting a truckload of goals in this final Fezan. Absolutely it's gonna be amazing I'm really sure uh, to stop Iran would take something special from uh, Saudi because Iran just blasted the Bangladesh side yesterday and we were covering that game we were expecting a lot from that game for Bangladesh but it was a 5-0 scoreline eventually so that's uh, the look of the Rafsanjan team. Yes indeed we have Abbas, the captain, number eight, Subhan, Mehdi, Masood, Amin, Reza, Hassan, Hussein, Jaber, Farhad, Mustafa, and number 11, Oves. Keep an eye on him. He's just a young lad, 22 years of age, and absolutely electric on the pitch. Brilliant skills, and he's very tall and very quick, so watch out for him. Well, about uh, from that, talking about the next team, that's uh, Saudi Saab. Pamasak, the captain, Gharawi Sultan, Badr Muhammad Al Julifi, number seven, Abdul Aziz Al Kahtani, number 18, Ammar Hassan Faisal, and of course the trainer himself, Raid Shannon. He will be very, very proud of his troops who have made it all the way to the final dance, the final stage. Yeah, so it's uh, the Gulf on one side and uh, the African nations on the other. And it's fitting, I think, for the kind of tournament that we've had and the teams that have performed. You know, have done wonderfully well, the, both the Saudi team and the Iran team, as I was saying earlier as well. But this is going to be a match where one mistake from the opponent can actually lead to the loss of the tournament. Absolutely. It's going to be a fascinating tactical battle here. Nobody is going to be willing to make mistakes. Even as the slightest slip, we've seen Iran are a free-scoring side. Saudi are very, very measured in possession. They love to build the ball up from the back, move at speed. A lot of movement off the ball. They have a lot of athleticism. So both sides will be gunning for the gold medal. Both sides will be gunning for the title. Best of luck to both. It's going to be Iran in all green to kick off. And Saudi Arabia in all white with the green socks. Prayers being given to the Almighty. Look what it means to these lads. And here we go. The cup final has kicked off. Well, yeah, so uh, Iran having the possession here, jersey number five and playing it uh, towards the right flank. Jersey number five, mind you, for Iran is Jabir. Immediately an attack there for Oves. He's the young man, full of speed, full of pace, getting a half chance at the goal, but nicely blocked away by Mohammed, the keeper there. Got in a bit of a scuffle in his previous game with the Moroccans. Tempers got really flared in that game. But now it's the Saudis on the ball looking to create and looking to 
reset from the left flank. Nicely working the ball there. Lovely spin there, immediately breaking down. Desperate tackle. And the referee has called them up. Some dangerous play there from the Iranians, Faizan. Absolutely. And uh, reset from the left flank. Nicely working the ball there. Lovely spin there, immediately breaking down. Not your natural grass, it can cut you off back. Reset from the left flank. Nicely working the ball. Do those slides that you can do on a regular grass pitch. That was Amar with that brilliant spin move and the burst of pace. It's the captain, Mohamed Al Julifi. And it's hit the upright. Can you believe it? The inside of it. The referee says it's no goal. A lucky escape for the Iranians. Wow, that's really a lucky escape for the Iranians. That could have been easily counted as a goal. Rafsanjan would have been on the back foot here. Saab, they're looking very positive. Although I would have said, had you asked me before the match, I would have said Iran has an upper hand on this game. But Saab already looking to make inroads. Iran looking to rebuild from the back, getting away with one there. Just 90 seconds into this final and my goodness, it's been absolutely breakneck speed from both sides. Brilliant move there. It's Farhad out there battling with Mohammad Al Julifi. The battle of the number sevens, that's going to be one to watch, Faizan. Absolutely, both uh, number sevens won Farhad for Iran. And um, for Saudi sub, the number seven is Mohammad Al Julifi, as uh, Ahmed pointed out. Brilliant players, both of them. And game makers for their sides as well. Iran looking to rebuild down the left, playing it straight into the middle, working it around. Great block there by the keeper Mohammed for Saudi Arabia. That should have been 1 0. Well, yeah, brilliant stop there by uh, the keeper. And now Iran coming into once again. And the keeper, desperate move once again, a sliding tackle coming in for him. And that's a foul given by the referee here. And I think rightly so as well. Absolutely lost control of the ball there. Hossein nicking it off the Saudi keeper's feet. Could have easily been a red card, could have easily been a booking. But they've gotten away with one there. Iran with a dangerous set-piece opportunity here. Can Farhad capitalize? Well, Iran will have to do good on this uh, free kick here because it's very, very close to the goal. So all the Saudi players are now in defensive position. Iran looking to attack the ball here. Breaking the wall, passing it on and playing it to the goal. The goalkeeper gets it eventually after two, three tries and a counter-attack. Trying to make a counter-attack but Iran has the control once again and a mistimed hit ensures that the ball goes out of play. Frantic defending there by the Saudis. That should have been a goal there for Iran. They'll be ruining this opportunity this time. Mohamed Al Julifi breaking down the left flank, beating one but he couldn't beat the second. And you can see the Iranians having a word with each other. Calm down. Keep a hold of your nerves. You have 30 minutes to play, not 30 seconds. Don't burn your energy quickly. Absolutely. Saudi Sab now has the ball in possession. And from the keeper to jersey number five. Mohammed, the keeper taking risks once again, has to clear it wildly in the end. So Iranians with the pressing there, forcing mistakes from the Saudi back line. Have to be very careful. They have a lot of speed with the likes of Farhad and Oves. Reza out there as well. And of course, the captain himself is there, number eight. Very, very high quality side. And like you mentioned in a pre-match chat, the defending champs, so they want to go back to back and go hunt for glory. Absolutely. And they're looking like a very, very... Uh well-oiled unit in this uh, championship till now. Well, uh, in case you've missed uh, the start of the game, we can tell you this, that this is the big finals of the championship. This is what these all teams, the 16 countries, were playing for. The World Corporate Champions Cup final happening here at La Liga Academy between Iran and Saudi Saab. And it's looking like an uh, absorbing game already in the first six minutes. Looks like the early nerves have passed. Both sides have looked to settle into a pattern. Chipped into the box. Reza, they're having... Hossein, in fact, having a word there with the referee. But Mohammed Al Julifi was agreeing with him. The battle of the Middle Eastern giants. Saudi Arabia and Iran. And then we have the African derby in the plate final between Mali 
and Nigeria. So truly a global game here. 16 teams from all over the globe. They've lost the possession there. Iran on the ball now trying to break. Oves on the ball. Low shot. Mohammed with a brilliant outstretch save. And he keeps Saudi Saab on level pairing. Brilliant stuff there by the Saudi goalkeeper, Fezan. Absolutely amazing. That was, uh, you know, goal written all over it. But he certainly saved it. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Oh. And again, another shot at the goal this time by Saudi Saab. Good save by the Irani goalkeeper there. Wonderful stuff coming in. Absorbing game. End-to-end -end stuff here, both sides. Looking for the early lead. Shot on goal and Mohammed makes another top save. He's having the game of his life already. We're barely halfway into it. And my goodness, end-to-end -end action. Chances created at both ends. Mehdi doing well for the Iranians. And Mohammed in the goal for Saudi Saab. Brilliant stuff. Amar on the ball for the kick-in. Amar kicking it to uh, jersey number 11 there. And going back to the keeper, Mohammed. Mohammed has been brilliant, as Ahmed pointed out. He has saved already at least three goals for his side. And this is what it's going to be. This is what it's boiling up to. The keepers have to be really agile and uh, they need to save as many balls as they can because one mistake, as I said earlier, can cost you not just the game, but the championship. Absolutely. Now it's Hussein on the ball, uh, giving it away to Ammar, but just about getting it back. It's a jabber, number five for Iran now on the ball, trying to create something down the left flank. Give and go with Hussein, who absolutely tried to smash it into the back of the net. It's all about precision, not about now on the ball, trying to create something down the left flank. Give and go with Hussein, who absolutely tried to arm. You need to place the ball, not try to power it past the keeper, because that, that's very unlikely to happen as Mohammed Al Julifi tries to rebuild here for the Saudi, and he's given it away to Oase immediately, but a tough sliding tackle here. Well, Sultan was the man uh, doing that for uh, the Saudi sub team. Nicely done there. And I think uh, Iran is uh, going to be taking a kick in. Yeah, there it is. Given as a foul, in fact, that sliding tackle, as you mentioned, it's frowned upon in 5-on-5 five five futsal. It's the Iranian captain taking responsibility. Hammering it in. And good save by Mohammed at the near post once again. And now they can counter here. It's Mohammed Al Julifi, number seven, working it back to the keeper so they'll have time to reset. Number eight, Ammar. He is their main player. Very quick, very agile. Brilliant control. Squares it. Oh, it's gone just behind Ammar. That should have been 1 0. Absolutely. But a counter coming in now from Iran. Jersey number four running into it. And a good bit of defending coming in from Saudi Sub as well. It's all happening here from one team to the other, from one defender to the other. It's happening in a flash. End to end stuff here. They're battling for honor. They're battling for pride. They're battling for the right to be called champions. Iran have a legacy and a title to defend and Saudis are the pretenders. They want to take home the trophy and the gold medal. Mohammed Al Julifi once again on that right flank, lofting the ball. Nicely done, good control there. But Oves nicks it away, the young champion, the young stallion for Iran. Well, the ball goes out of play, but uh, what a good pass that was for uh, Saudi sub. And good control as Ahmed pointed out as well. Just could not get beyond the defenders. Otherwise, that would have been uh, dangerous for uh, Rafsanjan, Iran. And what I've enjoyed the most here, Fezan, is that both sides have looked to score goals. They haven't gone into their shell. They haven't played for time. They're going all guns blazing, trying to stamp their authority on proceedings. Ten minutes have absolutely screamed by Ammar. Once again, brilliant. Down the right flank. He has some space. Squares the ball. Saudi take a shot. Mohammed Al Julifi scuffed it. And cleared in the nick of time by Iran. Oh, not time. Brilliant. Down the right flank. He has some space. Squares the ball. Saudi take a shot. Mom. But uh, good defensive work as well coming in from Iran. That made it difficult to actually execute the shot. Now the ball has gone out of play and there's going to be a kick in. Saudi Saab is going to take it. And of course, we need to talk more about the tournament. We've had corporate teams here from all over the globe, literally from Bangladesh, from Mali, from Ireland, from Lebanon, from the UAE itself, from Saudi Arabia, Iran, Morocco, Tunisia, truly a global festival of futsal. And in the end, it's these two sides, perhaps the home teams, in a sense, who've made it to the grand final. Absolutely. And they deserve to be here.
the kind of uh, football that both the teams have played. Ahmed pointed out one thing that they are both aggressive teams and they are doing exactly that. They are playing to their strengths, which is, I think, the right way to go ahead. A lot of credit must go to the trainer of Saudi, Saab, Raed Shanan. He likes to wear number four. He can occasionally get out there if need be. <laughs> but so far, his troops have done really well, especially that man on screen in the red jersey, Muhammad, their goalkeeper. And Ammar, he's really caught the eye. Early clearance here into no man's land. So this time, Iran will get the opportunity to reset and create a chance. Time is flying by. Just look at that. Three more minutes to go actually into the first break. After the first half, both the teams have been going about their job perfectly. And the defence have been brilliant as well. We've talked about the attack. But attack is no good till the time you defence the attack from the opposition as well. Jabber plays the ball. away. Oh, he's dived into the post itself. And it's gone wide. It's number 19, the young champion, Hassan. Look at that effort. Look at that commitment, Fezan. He's moved the goal. Desperate move coming in uh, from him. Opposition as well. Jabber plays the ball. away. Oh, he's dived into the post itself. Literally throwing his body onto the line. And these guys are playing on a rock-hard astroturf. Anytime you hit the surface, you're going to be grazed. You're going to bleed. But these guys have absolutely no care for that. No care for their health. They want the trophy. Incredible commitment. Incredible passion for the game. And once again, pointing out the fact that these are not professional footballers. They are people who work 9 to 5 in their jobs and actually take out time to train with their teams every single day, possibly just to build up to this tournament that they are playing in. And that is why it is a big deal for Iran and for Saudi as well. Mohammed al trying to keep the ball in, but it's going to run out. Oves plays it back to Jaber, number five for Iran. He is their defensive playmaker, their sweeper, alongside number seven, Farhad there. He's absolutely electric on the field as well. Number four, Hussein also getting into the attack. Loftic, oh, Oves tries to head it on, but that was very difficult, even at 11 aside level, let alone at futsal. But once again, four, Hussein also getting into the attack. Loftic, oh, Oves. The kind of commitment and the desperation that has been shown by both these teams Oves, brilliant, up in the air, the timing was perfect, off the jump as well, just could not get the execution going because it was pretty high. But what a jump, reminded me of one Cristiano Ronaldo, jumps like that. Absolutely, CR7 can really jump into the skies and Oves is right behind him. Young lad, he's really caught the eye and I must tell you, whenever Iran are not in action, they're always watching every team very closely watching their tactics, watching their game plans, how they create their attacks, what are their formations and their movements. This time, Ammar, low cross to Julifi, working across. Oh, and what a chance wasted there by Abdulaziz Al-Kahtani. Unbelievable. That should have been the lead for Saudi. Absolutely, but good work from the keeper for Iran as well. Brilliant stuff coming in. That was a powerful hit. The problem with that was it was straight at the keeper, so he didn't have to move much. But still, good work from him. Farhad on the ball here for Iran then. Lofts it into the air straight to Mohammed, who's had a brilliant game for Saudi Arabia in the goal. Mohammed Al-Julifi bursting through the middle now, shrugging off defenders. And he's finally lost the ball. Farhad streaking forward this time. Switches over to Hussein. Farhad tries to chip it. And it's that young lad over there, number 19, Hassan. Trying to create an opportunity. Blocked away. This time they square it. And it's been cut away just in the nick of time by Mohammed Al Julifi. Abdulaziz Al Kahtani battling here. And that should be a foul, surely. My goodness, the pace of this game is absolutely breathtaking. Al Julifi. Abdulaziz Al Kahtani battling here. And that should be a foul, surely. They have been brilliant. And uh, that guy, Hassan, that you were talking about, he should be named as the flying Iranian. He has been amazing in the field, jumping around, diving around. Brilliant saves coming in from him and Oves as well. Amazing stuff. Incredible stuff. Those two tall guys, number 19 and 11, this time worked across. The rolling subs are coming through. Ammar wins the ball. That will be halftime in the cup final. Nil-nil so far. It's been an incredible battle going at full throttle. But so far, 
neither side has broken the deadlock. We'll take a short break and be right back for the second half of the grand final of the World Corporate Champions Cup. Stay tuned. Right then, welcome back everyone for the second half of the cup final of the World Corporate Champions Cup in Dubai 2021, live from the La Liga Academy in Sports City. It's nil-nil at the break. It's SABB from Saudi in all white and the Iranians of Rafsanjan playing in all green. But it's been an electrifying first half, Fezan. Absolutely absorbing. And now I think it's going to be Iran that are going to take the first touch here for the Second half, yeah, because Saudi took it first, or was it Iran? I think it's Saudi that's going to take the first uh, touch here and going for the shot from the midfield. Not a great idea, maybe just trying to surprise the keeper there. Absolutely, try to catch him unawares. Always on the ball right now with Reza, trying to build here. Ammar getting on the ball, nice through ball into the centre, but a bit isolated there is the Saudi striker. And they have to go back and reset with Muhammad, the goalkeeper. Worked to Badr, trying to play that through ball, but always. In fact, it's Hussein who read it very nicely there. And so the Iranians can rebuild. 
Well, uh, Iran, uh, Iran has uh, the control of the ball now. And they're trying to make a move happening almost there. A cross coming in. The player just could not reach to the right flank in the right time. And uh, an opportunity gone down begging here. And now a very good pass coming in from the goalkeeper, Mohammed to his attacker on the left flank. But good defence ensures that it's going to be a corner kick coming in. Yes, that was Badr number 9 streaking down the left flank of the Iranians. Give and go here, but it's been blocked right in the nick of time. Very, very close. Masood stepping in there for the Iranians. Now the attack is on. A bit of an overload, but he scuffed his pass. But it's going to be Hussein who has stepped in just in time. Hassan and Oves, the two strikers here, number 19 and number 11. It's going to be Jabber trying to rebuild once again with Masood. Shot on goal. Mohammed has mishandled it. Hits the upright. Can you believe it? Squared. And 1-0 for the Iranians. They take the lead in the grand final. They are appealing for a no goal here. But Iran has scored. And I think the referee has given it to Iran as well. Yeah, so 1-0. The champions are doing it once again. Saab has played really well in this game. But it's Iran that have taken the lead here. Raf Sanjan on the goal. Brilliantly worked there into the gap. Found the open man. A bit of a controversy here, but... There always is one in a cup final, but it has been given 12 minutes and 40 seconds to go in the second half. It's the all green of the Republic of Iran who have taken the lead and now Saudi have to strike and they have to strike quickly. Absolutely. We'll uh, have to see how Iran proceeds from here on in because what we have seen in the previous games is they keep on attacking the ball even if they have the lead. So it would be good to see as they are attacking right now as well. Another shot on goal, this time a little wide, but a good attempt nonetheless. So Iran is going to keep on attacking. Absolutely. That's the name of the game in 5 on 5 futsal. You have to keep pressing. You have to keep running off the ball especially. And it's going to be a corner for goal. Mohammed has mishandled it. Hits the upright. Can you believe it? Squared and 1-0 for the Iranians. To the open man and he tucked it away in style. Play on. It's Bumsak number 10 on the ball. Pulling up there, good defense there by number five for Iran, Jabber. And this time they're going to break. Bit of a shove there from Ammar, but the referee has allowed play to go on. And this is getting feisty now. This is getting very aggressive. Masood taking his time and calming down the Iranian charges, just taking the sting out of the game. Absolutely. Sometimes it's really important, really good to slow things down. And that is what he's done here, Masood. And uh, absolutely amazing work from Iran. Iran now taking it easy, slowing things down because Saudi had come out all guns blazing right after that goal. 11 minutes to go in the cup final. It's the keeper Mehdi on the ball, just taking his sweet time. Allowing some rolling subs to come in. He's chipped it towards the right flank. Nicely done. There's some space here, but couldn't find a ways there on the right flank. Badr doing really well there and clearing the ball. Absolutely amazing work. That's absolutely brilliant. What an absorbing game we are having here. The finals. This is what the championship was held for. And it is happening the way it should. Iran and Saudi both putting everything in that is there to give in this particular game. And it's all so entertaining and so absorbing to watch especially in the Dubai heat square towards the center nicely cut away by Ammar it's going to be Bumsak on the ball trying to play it on the right flank but he's just cleared it and the Saudis will rebuild here with Mohammed the goalkeeper on the ball it's very important especially in 5 and 5 futsal to use your keeper as a libero but they're trying to find some space but the Iranians their movement off the ball has been absolutely top class this afternoon Fezan brilliant stuff Absolutely amazing. Although Iran is one of, but I cannot say a bad word against Saudi. It's not like Saudi has given anything away. It's just that Iran maybe got lucky on that third attempt in that goal and finally got the goal for themselves. But as they say, fortune favors the brave and it has been favoring Iran till now. But there's blo a short block there. Trying to rebuild once again. He's made an impact as soon as he's come on in the second half. So good tactical change here from the Saudis. 
Bump second of the number 10, trying to dribble past the Iranians, trying to square the ball, but straight into the hands of Mehdi. Very, very close. But Saudis are getting close. Good aggressive tackle once again. And it's the young man always battling hard. Look at him, streaking across the middle. Incredible pace and incredible stamina. And Mehdi will take his sweet time to gather up the ball for Iran. All Iran needs to do is to defend for the eight, next eight minutes. But it's not going to be easy because Saudi, as I said previously as well, they are coming out all guns blazing. And what a brilliant last two minutes we've seen for the Saudi team here. They're coming hard at Iran and that is why Iran is taking their time and they've slowed the proceedings down. They want to get rid of the timer on the screen. Mohammad Al Julifi back in the game number seven for SABB. He is their talisman, one of their key players. Time is slowly but surely running out for the Saudis to equalize. And there you can see Mohammed taking a bit of a risk on his left foot, played down the left flank, but there's nobody there. And Iran will get the ball back. Now they have to deny possession to the Saudis here, Faisan. They just need to play keep away. Absolutely. And I think that is what they're trying, Ahmed, uh, for the last two minutes. It's like you've read their minds. They have been trying to do that, but now it's time for attack. And attack is what Iran does. Going back to their defender and now into the midfield. A good pass coming in and a good shot. And is that another one? I think, oh, that was really close. That was mighty close. I think that hit the post and does. Going back to their defender and now into the midfield. A good pass coming in and a good shot. My goodness, will that be the chance, the slice of luck that the Saudis needed. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the cup final. It's been close. It's been tight. There's only been one goal between the two. Chipped into the box towards Hussein, but that's going to skew away. And Farhad has gone down in some serious pain. Might have taken a blow there. And of course, uh, since they are in the lead, a bit of play acting is always in play. But he looks like Farhad is fine. That's another way to waste time. And we've seen uh, <laughs> world-class players do that. So, yeah, well done, Farhad. And now he's running away, just like a horse. <laughs> But credit to him, he's gone off the field, not wasting any time. That's the true spirit of futsal. Keep the game moving, keep the game rolling. Meanwhile, it is a free kick for Rafsan Jan. Mohammed Al Julifi and Kahtani in the wall there. It's the captain, free kick specialist, stepping in. You can see Hassan out there, but that shot has been just scuffed wide. So no harm, no foul there for the Saudis. Yeah, I think, um, again, too ambitious coming in from Iran, trying to go for that glory shot here. Nonetheless, it's getting intense. It's getting livelier by the minute. And not many minutes remaining in this game. Six more as uh, Saab would want to take possession, want to take control of these ne next six minutes and maybe score an equalizer as soon as possible. Mohammed will get on the ball here, passes it immediately, gets the ball rolling. Yes, just six, under six minutes to play. Abdullah Al Julifi, Muhammad Al Julifi, pardon me, on the ball. And he's playing an attack. Usually he's the sweeper, the libero. And yes, he's back in his usual position then. Given away, brilliant defending. Jabber has had a fantastic game here for Rafsan Jan. He's been the rock at the back, snuffed out any attacks that the South. He's back in his usual position then. Given away, brilliant defending. Jabber has. Game. Absolutely, and not just in defence. In fact, in the midfield, he's been brilliant passing uh, the ball to the attackers and making the game happen for Iran. He was involved in that goal as well. And another shot on goal. This is good work from Mohammed once again. As Emma had told you a hundred times maybe that this is the game of his life that Mohammed is playing. That was an absolute rocket coming in from Hassan. But straight into the happen for Iran. He was involved in that goal as well. And another shot on goal. This is good. Caught that. I think that ball would have burst through him. Excellent goalkeeping there by the Saudi number one. And now it's Jaber once again. He has been absolutely incredible today. Again, Jaber in the defense. Jaber in the midfield. Jaber involved in the goal as well. And now it's... Uh, Saab taking the possession of the ball. Jersey number 17 trying to get rid of the two defenders from Iran. Passing it on. And a good block coming in from uh, the Irani defenders. That man, Jaber, once again, number five for Iran. 
He's been all over the place, being the creator from the back, stepping into midfield, adding that extra man. Mohammed Al Julifi, number seven out there on the right flank in his usual posi possession. Badr skips past his defender, but once again, they've been closed down. And it's going to be Reza streaking forward this time down the left flank. Shot at goal and Mohammed makes yet another brilliant save, this time off Mustafa. Another brilliant shot on goal and another brilliant save coming in from Mohammed. Mohammed has been absolutely superlative in this particular game. Into the last four minutes of the game and it's going to get tighter and tighter as the game progresses. But that's... And it's going to be Reza streaking forward this time down the left flank. Shot at goal and Mohammed makes yet... And in fact, headbutted the repost. Mohammed Al Julifi this time across, but Mehdi does really well. Read the play there. Hassan was standing there to just head the ball in, but Mehdi stepped in just in time and he has no gloves on. Traditional style goalkeeping from the Iranian number one. Well, yeah, there's going to be a um, foul and uh, Saudi sub now is getting an opportunity here to actually make amends of what they've done in the first 27 minutes of this game. So yeah, if they can get a goal here, an equaliser here, the game is wide open. Oh, trying here. Mohamed Al Julifi squares the ball. And off the Iranian defenders. They've laid an absolute siege across the goal. Have the Saudis. Mohamed Al Julifi working the ball to the right. It's Hassan. Has to work it back. Look at them following the ball, herring after it in every instance. And all he can do is reset, go all the way back to Badr. And he has to look up, looking for a run, looking for an attacker. Absolutely no space. The Iranians are suffocating the Saudi strikers right now. Two and a half minutes to go in the cup final. And Saudi still one goal down. Mohammed is coming now to the midfield to actually pass it on to the right winger. And again, good bit of work. Good passing as well from Saudi. A game play coming in from Saudi, but a good block once again from Iran. Brilliant stuff. Iran... Since the time they have started defending the game, they are good at defending as well, not just at attacking. Absolutely, they've shown a different aspect to their futsal. We've seen them bursting forward, creating attacks at will. But this time, they've had to park the bus. They've had to stop the Saudi juggernaut. And you can see the trainer of Saudi Saab, Rai Chanan, very upset. The Iranians are ready, about to step in for celebrations. But they're going across for that corner kick. Less than two minutes to play in the cup final. It's a slim lead for Iran. Play towards Ammar. Once again, nothing there. Badr working at the ball around, trying to find an opening, trying to find somebody making a run. But it's been brilliant defending there. Hassan does really well, clears the ball. And it's all 10 men in the Iranian half right now. What a save! Mehdi off the crossbar, off the upright. Iran still somehow in the lead. Wow, that hit the crossbar and how it hit the hand of uh, the goalkeeper Mehdi and then hit the crossbar. But what a shot coming in from Saudi once again. They're making things happen in the last 10 minutes of this game. And it's all 10 men in the Iranian half right now. What a save, Mehdi. Save of his life. Absolutely incredible. And now it's Iran on the counter-attack. They have some space. And it's 2-0. Rafsan Jan are going to be World Corporate Cup champions once again. They've taken the goal. They've taken the two-goal cushion. Rafsan Jan, you are ruling the world. Absolutely amazing gameplay once again. The incredible. And now it's Iran on the counter-attack. They have some space. And it's 2-0. Rafsan Jan. With the ball into the goal. And that is it. Hussein was the man with that goal there. Now the lead 2-0, unassailable with the timing, uh, timer running out. It has been a gripping, intense, incredible, dramatic final. But in the end, it's going to be Rafsan Jan who are going to be crowned World Corporate Cup champions for the year 2021. We've had breathless action here at the La Liga Academy in Dubai Sports City. It's been, they have run the gauntlet, they have defeated all the challengers and in the end, it's going to be the Iranians who are going to triumph. They're pushing for their third. And it's a very poor tackle there from Badr. But that is going to be a straight red. Number nine going off the pitch in tears. It's been an incredible battle 
But in the end, it's going to be the team from Iran in all green who are going to be crowned kings of futsal. Absolutely, and they true. It's going to be the Iranians who are going to triumph. They're pushing for their third, and it's a very menacing. That was filled with malaise as well. That was not great. That's against the sportsman spirit that we've seen Saudi Saab play with throughout the tournament. Ah, that was possibly just a rush of blood coming in uh, for the player there. Absolutely. Desperate tackle there from Badr and a straight red, but credit to the Iranians. Good save there by Mohammed once again. Time has run out. Is it over? We're still waiting for the signal. No, play has to continue. A bit of extra cut time still remaining, but Iran are on the ball. A two-goal cushion. They're seconds away from retaining their champions. Tag, lifting the trophy, breaking forward. Abbas squares the ball, 3-0. The youngster Oves gets his goal and the cutthroat celebration. Iran is ruling the world. Absolutely, and that is time. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have the winner, the champions. That's Rafsan Jan from Iran. They are the champions once again. Absolutely amazing scenes here. The winners on the screen, unfortunately, are not Saab. It's Rafsan Jan. They are the winners. Iran, the champions, once again for the second time in the third season of this championship. Absolutely amazing scenes. They are truly deserving, Ahmad. What a gameplay from them. They have thoroughly outclassed the Saudi Arabians, defending their title. Look at the celebrations. They're dancing in the streets of Tehran. They're dancing in the streets of Dubai. And they're dancing at the La Liga Academy. Proudly fluttering the flag of their nation. And there it is, the winners, Rafsan Jan from Iran, defending their title. It was a close game for the majority of the time, 20-25 minutes, and it was 1-0. But then the dam broke, and the Saudi resistance was broken, giving praise to the Almighty. And look at the celebrations, incredible scenes. Absolutely amazing, Iran truly deserving it. The way they played yesterday, the way they played on the first day itself, they showed us that they're going to be a team that is going to reach the finals. And uh, it was done and dusted when they played against Bangladesh yesterday. Absolutely amazing. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen, from us, from Ahmed Khwaja, from Fezan Khan. Also, Abdul Rahman is the other com commentator. There's another game going on and you can watch it live as well. With that, we'll take your leave and maybe see you next year as well.